Wasps, yellow jackets, bees, they each have their own habitat, but look only subtly different. The last thing on a patient's mind when they are being chased or stung is insect identification. So when we evaluate them, we don't concern ourselves with their ability to identify the stinging insect. We test them for all stinging insects. Stinging insect allergy affects a small but one could say anxious segment of the population. Some of them live in fear of picnics and the great outdoors, but this anxiety can be reduced by patient education and treatment. While the risk of a recurrent anaphylactic reaction may be as high as 70%, this can be reduced to 2% with venom hyposensitization shots, also known as venom immunotherapy. The goal of today's brief talk is to discuss the different types of reactions to venom-producing insects. We won't be concerning ourselves with non-venomous insects such as fleas, bedbugs, or mosquitoes since they very seldom cause anaphylaxis. The venomous insects are of the order Hymenoptera and include bees such as honeybee and bumblebee, vespids, the yellow jacket, wasp, and hornet, and the fire ant which notoriously stings in the southeast. Insect stings are painful and traumatic to children, but children are at lower risk of anaphylaxis as compared to adults. They are only about a third as likely as adults to have an anaphylactic reaction to an insect sting, and those reactions are often just limited to the skin and not considered life-threatening. 3% of adults are affected, though, and for many of them the risk is lifelong, though it may be reduced by venom immunotherapy. Risk factors for venom allergy include those who are intermittently exposed to stings, but not those routinely stung, such as beekeepers, perhaps because the frequent stings act as a form of immunotherapy. What is disturbing, though, is that of the estimated 50 fatalities attributed to insect stings annually in the United States, half occur in persons not previously known allergic. Unfortunately, we cannot screen everyone for venom allergy since IgE to venoms is present in many persons who have never had and may never have an allergic reaction to a sting. Insect stings cause pain and burning by mediators including histamine, serotonin, and kinins. The vespids, such as hornet, yellow jacket, and wasp, may sting multiple times. As a side note, even non-allergic persons can die from stinging insects if stung often enough. 1,500 stings is fatal for the average 70 kilogram adult. Vespid stings are more toxic though, and as few as 50 stings may cause a variety of medical conditions including rhabdomyolysis, acute tubular necrosis, hemolysis, thrombocytopenia, coagulopathy, and rarely a variety of neurologic disorders including Guillain-Barre syndrome. Since the honeybee may leave its stinger sac in the patient, it's important to remove the stinger sac with as little squeezing as possible. This is best done with a blunt object, such as a credit card or the dull edge of a knife. The mildest allergic reaction is the large local. It is IgE mediated, but carries a low risk of progression to anaphylaxis. The large local reaction occurs up to a day later and may last for up to one week. It may look cellulitic and be warm to the touch, but it's also itchy. It is almost never infected and best treated with oral steroids, ice, and elevation. The risk for anaphylaxis with subsequent stings is slightly higher than the general population. The systemic allergic reaction, pretty much by definition, is any reaction distant from the site of the sting. It may simply be milder to carry or angioedema. The more severe the anaphylactic reaction, the greater the urgency to treat with adrenaline, and the likelier that subsequent stings will be anaphylactic. Patients at risk for more severe allergic reactions to stinging insects include those who've already had a severe anaphylactic reaction to a stinging insect, asthmatics, patients taking beta blockers and ACE inhibitors, and patients with systemic mastocytosis. The latter is a very high risk group and they may react adversely even in the absence of venom IgE.
Even the most allergic patients will not react to every sting. We don't know why, but it's important to know that for a patient with even the most convincing history of anaphylaxis to a stinging insect, not all subsequent stings will cause a reaction. So if a patient with a history of anaphylaxis is stung again and does not react, one cannot conclude that they have outgrown the allergic sensitivity either. Studies of patients with a history of systemic reaction to stinging insects and positive venom skin tests have been done over the years with sting challenges. The risk is as high as 75% for those with a history of severe reactions, but on average is about 50%. It declines to 35% by 5 years and to 25% by 10 years, but the risk never fully disappears and some may react decades after their last sting. The history determines whether or not testing is done. Patients who have had any reaction distant from the site deserve testing. The exception is children under 16 who have had urticaria only for whom the risk is low. Skin testing is more sensitive than RAS testing but should be done six weeks after the sting reaction. The level of test sensitivity does not correlate with the severity of sting reactions though and some of the strongest reactions occur in those with large local reactions only who are considered at low risk. Lastly, if the history suggests a strong reaction but all testing is negative, rule out mastocytosis. Just as we test patients for all stinging insects, we also treat with all venoms that test positive, and the course of therapy is a minimum of five years. If we attempt to discontinue sooner, even if skin tests are negative, then we place the patient at somewhat greater danger. Their risk is about 10% in that instance. Lastly, if a patient does not tolerate immunotherapy to venoms, it could be because of underlying mastocytosis. Patients should exercise caution and be well prepared for a sting reaction. I'm Dr. Gary Statmauer with a rapid grand rounds from cityallergy.com.